Yeah, I think so. Ryan, are you ready? I was born ready. All right, well, with that, I'm going to roll the video. That is not the video. <laughs> this is the video. All right. Oh my God. Can this not be over there? All right. There we go. Uh, yep, welcome blue to Shell episode 46. The Blue Shell episode 46. Um, and this needs to get stretched out again for some reason. My overlay, I have to figure out a way to fix this because this is annoying. <laughs> um, you, got, you, got, you got Blue Shelled. I did get Blue Shelled. Oh no. <laughs> welcome to episode 46 of Get Blue Shelled. I still need to fix that title color. It is still messed up, but it's okay. It looks great. We're here, and today we're talking about a lot of things. Actually, we're talking about Animal Crossing, hot yes. takes, different yes. hot takes. Yes. Um, and other stuff like that. So let's let's just start a podcast and then talk about do do a little catch up. How are you guys? What have you been up to in this last week? Oh, uh, pretty good. Nothing. Nothing really too special. I've been um I've been playing Astral Chain. Re- Astral you know. Chain. Yeah, I guess I really haven't told you guys because I was saving it for the podcast. Oh, don't worry, Mike. I see see the switch. <laughs> yeah, you see the switch. People when your game pops up. So I saw you, Mike. <laughs> okay, good. Ryan watches out for me, and I'm happy about it. Yeah, I've been playing Astral Chain because I wanted to play something before Xenoblade, and now I'm not rushing to finish it before Xenoblade, but I'm inspired to finish it before Xenoblade. What is that? What Ryan? What are your thoughts? I really, really like it. I'm like, damn, when is Bayonetta 3 coming out? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, because they're both from the same publisher? Yeah. Yo, Bayo 3 better come out this year. I'm going to be very upset. Y'all know. <laughs> Y'all know. Um, but I'm glad you're liking it, though, Mike. Yeah, it's it's a very good game. So that's been occupying a lot of my time, besides, obviously, the work stuff. How, How are you guys doing? going? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't sound very reassuring. This week wasn't too bad, but like Friday, I was working till like one in the morning for no reason. What? Yeah, I, I remember. Like, what? That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just what happens. It's just oh. life. Well, I hope it gets better for you, Mike. That's rough. Thank you. I think this week's gonna be fairly slow, so That's hopefully good. I catch my breath a bit. Yeah. On the flip side, I think I'm gonna actually be kind of slammed. So. Oh no. Yeah. Or, like, but. Time passing. Well, I think it'll be good because I think I'm gonna be editing. But I don't know. That's good. Are you have you been doing more editing stuff? No, this should be the first time since um I went remote that I'm editing. I think it's like I want to edit. Oh, excuse me. I want to edit more, obviously, because like that's what I'm trying to get into. But at the same time, I was really enjoying not having to do anything all day. Yeah. So um. Even Paul. Yeah. So now I'm gonna actually lose a lot of time that I was already using to do WoW stuff for my guild. So that this will be interesting. Um, I but think you can handle it, but be careful. Thank it's you, thank you. Now, other than that, it's been it's been good. How about you, Ryan? I've been doing well, waiting for my Xenoblade order to come in in Amazon. So that's yes. been um, watching the clock. But I've been doing well. I've been <clears throat> obviously playing Animal Crossing in this week off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my god. Um, God, too many hot takes are making me <laughs> need some water. Um, we didn't get to the hot takes yet. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, but uh, I finally got my town to a five-star town. It took yeah. a while. Um, and it's funny because I know what the game has for its criteria. Like, there's actually an internal game code that, like, attracts your your flowers, your bridges, your furniture. It tracks all of it, and then that's how it calculates your star rating. So I've been trying to do a little bit of everything to get to five stars, and I finally got there. Yay. But you did it. You have all the flowers. Too many flowers. Um <laughs> But you know what? I'm making sure I'm saving room for new things eventually. So, very nice. But yes, hopefully Xenoblade comes in this week, so we can talk about that next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, as you guys know, I am not. Um, I'm probably not going to get it, but I will say this: I was watching Trihex play it on Twitch, and I have to say the graphics are honestly just really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they really did a great job of, um updating it to 
2020 type style of video games it just looks like the just the facial expressions in and of themselves are like a mile of a change i i only played the 3ds re uh port so i didn't play the original but i don't know like it, it was nice to play it on there but like every character had six polygons in their face <laughs> so it was like it, it was really hard to to watch the cutscenes but it looks really good i think that I know last week I was kind of like, why did they remake this? But obviously they did it with the intent of getting more people into the series because a lot of people probably got turned off by the bad graphics. So mm -hmm. the I original personally... was really hard like, graphic wise. Like I almost didn't get yeah. the game because of the graphics alone. And that sucks because I, I'm kind of the same way where like if graphics just look like ass, like I don't really want to play them. Yeah, so... it's just hard to get immersed. That's the problem is that it's hard to get immersed. It's not like I'm like, oh, it's, these are bad graphics. Like I'm not going to play. It's just I it's just really hard. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad. I'm glad that this seems to be um, an upgrade. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. So um, yeah, and then I guess last thing before we dive into the meat of this podcast is we have a Chrono Trigger update. Yes. So it's with the fans want. <laughs> for those yeah. of you who don't know, uh, Mike bought me Chrono Trigger for my birthday in October, and Ryan and I have never played it before. So we've been playing it together live on stream, and it's been really fun, actually. I've never, I've always wanted to play it. One, because I always thought that the music in it was phenomenal, and I was right. It is all really, really good. Uh, but also, I just like that type of basic RPG, nothing too complicated, old school. I've always wanted to play them. I missed out on them because I never had a Super Nintendo. I never had an NES, Genesis, any of that stuff. I, like, my first gaming console was a 64. So... Yeah, I, I personally have been really enjoying it. We just did the section with Isla where we got to meet her, and turns out she's Clark from the 100. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god, a twist. Twist. No, um, but actually it's been really cool. I just really like going back and forth in different time periods and seeing the same areas in different time periods. I think that's also just a really clever way to save space from like a game design standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I just think it's like very cleverly made. But Ryan, I'd like to hear your thoughts. No, I think you've kind of <clears throat> summed it all up for me. I think that it's really creative. We've always said it's ahead of its time for a 1995 game with the um, the time traveling, with the um, battle mechanics where you have to charge up your attack and you have to wait and strategically plan out your next move in time. It's been really great. And one thing actually that we didn't know last time that we do know for this podcast is there are actual animated cutscenes. Um, I think, Mike, I don't know if you know this, but the Steam version of Chrono Trigger, and this has actually been a common problem listed online, but sometimes it doesn't load the cutscene, or sometimes the setting that doesn't detect it. Oh, really? No, I didn't know so that. So when I told Nicole, oh, hey, we have a cutscene coming up, she was like, wait, we're going to have a cutscene, and then you see Isla taking out the Reptites, and it looks really, really cool. And uh -huh. then when we gave Frog the Masamune, that was a really cool cutscene as well. Um so I had to tell her to go back and watch some of the cutscenes we missed, like Luca fixing Robo. So it's really uh, cool how, again, for a 95 game, it has all these great features. Yeah. Man, it's like the cutscenes don't work like that. Yeah. I mean, good thing about YouTube is that, you know, you can always go back it's and watch there. them. It sucks that yeah. I didn't get to watch them, like, as it was happening. Because I definitely remember, uh -huh. I think I remember there being, like, a weird thing that happened when we missed the first cutscene. And I was, like, slightly thrown off because I was like, what's going on? But right. I think it's fine because I think... I think the regular game does a good enough job telling the story. I have to say, I have been pleasantly surprised by how good the story is, albeit very simple. Mm -hmm. I think it's very good. And I think that games need to return to that. And we're going to get to that in your hot take later. But I oh, think I that... Try. <laughs> I think that, like, these old school games, like, yeah, they have a charm to it. And yeah, a lot of them are clouded with nostalgia. But, I mean, I'm playing a game I've never played before from 1995 in 2020, okay? So this game is 25 years old. And... I am probably more immersed in the story than I have been in a long time. Maybe that's because Ryan actually forced me to read everything. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I just it's it's nice to play this, and I'm not shooting at at games like Final Fantasy or games like um, any of the Kojima st stuff because I know that those are heavily praised. But I also know that those can be very complicated, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's nice for some people to just play a simple RPG. Yeah. It's not too simple, where it's boring, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's not like. I, yeah, I think the important thing is it like ramps up its like complexity 
as it goes on. Yeah. Like it starts simple, like oh, just go through time to save the princess, and like yeah. that's it right now. And then later on, more stuff gets added, but it's enough to like take in while it's happening. It's not like they throw a whole bunch of info with like this huge plot twist, but make everything confusing because of it. Oh, I, I yeah. completely agree because I. Yeah, I, and I. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. Uh, Oh, no, 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 no. I was just going to quickly say that I think that's a really great point that you guys bring up where there has to be a fair balance, where if a game is, like Mike said, go and save the princess, it's way too simple, and it's kind of like, well, that was generic. I think that's not a great look for a game in this day and age, and I also feel like if you have a game that's overly complex with its twists and with its storytelling, it really becomes hard to follow, and then you lose interest in the characters in the story. Like, not to go back to Xenoblade for a second, but I think the original Xenoblade Chronicles, the one that got the Definitive Edition, has an amazing story, not just because it has twists, but because the overall, like, arc and message is very clear. Like, it's two, like, factions against each other. Fiora! Like, like yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very simple to understand, but there are a few twists. I will say, not to spoil Xenoblade 2 for Nicole, because she's only gotten halfway through the game. I do want to beat it. It's on the list. But, but Mike probably can attest that there are some points where they're going into, like, Blade Eaters and Flesh Eaters. And like, like the story got actually a little confusing at some point. Yeah, they get that of man. They Which did is like fun to like understand, like if you're into it. Like I am into that type of stuff. So it's fun to like try to wrap your head around it. But there hits a point where it's just like a little too much. Yeah. So there has to be a balance in a, in a story. Yeah, I have to agree. I think that that's what makes the, the story so special in this too, is that it starts out very simple. It doesn't try to be edgy and be like, what? I don't understand. Why is it so complicated? Like, who is that guy? And then you don't find out for 40 hours of the game. Like, I think mm -hmm. that's what makes it work so well. And also, I just this is going to sound kind of cheesy too, but I also just really like the aesthetic. Like, yeah. playing an old school pixel RPG is nice. Pokemon could never. <sighs> Pokemon. <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that the intro is done, we can actually dive into the meat of today's podcast, which is brought to you by. Just kidding. We don't have a sponsor. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> no, not no, yet. No, this is brought to you by the, the Nook, Nook Inc. Nook, Nook Inc. Inc. Nook, Tom Nook <laughs> definitely paid up, didn't pay us to say nice things about his game. No. Um, so, Animal Crossing New Horizons is the new Animal Crossing game that just came out. And. Mm -hmm. Um, all three of us have actually played it, albeit Mike and Ryan went a lot harder in it than I did. Uh, but I think it's been enough time where we can kind of talk about it, give our overall opinions. You guys have seen just about everything in the game, except for obviously holiday events that we haven't gotten to, DLC that hasn't come out yet. But as, as far as the base game goes, I think you both, especially Mike, got really, really into it. When yeah. you both designed amazing towns, and um, I kind of want to hear your overall thoughts on the the game starting from your first day and getting like the meat of it done, and then what you're actually doing since kind of beating the game, quote unquote, getting your five star town, getting your A ratings, all the other stuff. So I guess I'll go first because Mike obviously has done a little bit more than me and has kind of really expanded upon his town's concept. Like I think I took advantage of the new features in the game, but I kind of worked with what I had where Mike really went to town and ha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, ha. Mike, really, Mike really did a great job at, you know, expanding the concept. So I, I guess I'll quickly go first and say that I think it's an amazing game. Um, I think it's kind of hard to, you know, rank the Animal Crossing game. So I don't know if, if I would say this is the best, second best, third best, but I really do think they did a lot of great things for the series. I think that, you know, getting to decorate outside and basically um, make yes. your town however you want it. Like you want to have a residential district and have a neighborhood. You want to have all the shops together. You want to have like a giant campsite. You want to have a really cool waterfall shrine. Like you can do whatever you want with the decorating outside and also with the terraforming and um, waterforming. So that, oh, sorry, waterscaping. I think that is a really cool concept. I think the introduction of Nook Miles to essentially uh, have another form of currency just by playing the game in its raw form is also really great. Um, I just think in, in and of itself, it's a really innovative game for the series. I don't know if I would go as far to say it's a as a stark departure as Breath of the Wild was, but this does take a lot of creative leaps, which I appreciate. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um. Yeah, I guess from my first day of the island, it was like it starts off simple. Like obviously, you don't don't even have access to your full island, and you sort of have to go from there. And I sort of like that because it's like, oh, you're building up a community, but you eventually hit a point where you're just like, I want to get into the meat of it, you know. So, but once you get into the meat of it, it becomes a little like daunting of what you could actually do with the island. 
So you're going in, you're doing a little of everything. And it usually starts off with like, oh, let me create a little town square and like build it from there. You know, just start simple. And then you, from like that town square, you just expand to like the neighborhood part of the island, to the shopping district, to the museum section, to the your house and all of that stuff. So overall, it's a lot of stuff you could do with it. And it's very nice. But it doesn't come without its flaws either. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's very true. I so I definitely did not play this game as much as you guys, and I I actually went like super hard in this game the first like two weeks, and then I played for like another two weeks, and I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, mm -hmm. Typical Nicole fashion, but I will say, I definitely think that this is one of the better Animal Crossing games overall. I think they did a lot for the series in terms of making things accessible um up the, the house upgrades just the the small things you can do the terraforming is great even though i've actually never used the feature but i've seen what people can do with terraforming and it yeah. is absolutely it is crazy um carlos from uh, insane in the rain on youtube we talk about mm -hmm. it on every podcast because we're all we're like <laughs> his biggest fans but um he He'll sponsor us maybe one day he will sponsor us no um but he redid the entire diamond and pearl map on his town or like not the entire one but he like redid a bunch of towns That's and just so made cool. with the routes and stuff and i'm just sitting there like that is absolutely crazy that you could do something like that um mm -hmm. i really enjoy both of your guys' towns though i like that you guys have like a residential district um and like a little marketplace and you have hidden things for people like mike had a treasure contest like a treasure hunting contest yeah i want to do another one soon that was fun that was really fun and you know you find like hidden things in the town and stuff like that and um i don't know i i think that that's really cool i think it allows for a lot of creativity um and then you have people like me who just likes to ma maximize profit so i planted a tree in every possible spot in my town so it's actually a forest now uh, you can't walk around without hitting 70 trees getting to whatever <laughs> destination you want to get to yeah. um but i mean i was making bank by doing almost nothing so my favorite part of that is if I don't know if you've even got Isabel yet, I did. but when she's like when she's giving you the ratings for your town, and she's like, "Oh, there's too much trees. People are getting lost in the forest." <laughs> so I gotta recommend chopping down a few. No way! I, I don't yeah. talk to her. <laughs> so no, I, my rating's probably like an F. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it's, <ours>. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's bad. I know, but uh, honestly, overall, I think it was a really good game. Now I think we can. Are you ready for the hot take yet for this? Or is there anything else you guys want to say before we get into the actual hot take for Animal Crossing? Um, I'll, I'll make you go. There, I do want to go over some things that do bother me about the game yes. still. Yes, let's go. So, so <laughs> you're so ready. I'm for, so like, ready to tear. I love tearing games apart. It's <laughs> thing. Wait, so okay. is, this, is this the hot takes or is this just... No, this is happen? still Animal Crossing. Because I don't want to just like... I like I am biased towards Animal Crossing. I absolutely love the game. But, but there these are, are Animal Crossing hot takes? Me. <laughs> sure, sure. This is gonna lead into our animal, our regular hot takes. Boy, okay, starting with Animal it. Crossing hot takes, even though I don't think they are, because I'm pretty sure everyone agrees. Okay. Um, so I sort of don't want to spend too much time talking about how annoying the online is, because I think that's an obvious. Wait, one. We could all just agree that the online is still stuck in 1999. It's it's not that good. Like you shouldn't have to go to like the airport to open your gates. You shouldn't have to wait for one person to watch a cutscene. Okay, do you want to talk about what happened on the birthday party? Oh my god, yes, we do need to talk about what happened on the birthday party. Okay, so one of our one of our good friends, I don't know if we're allowed to say the name. Yeah, you can say it. Okay, so Kinja, one of my very good friends, we Kinja! were throwing a birthday party for. Kinja! We were throwing a birthday party for, and it was going great. So we're like, okay, let's all meet up like 15 minutes beforehand, and I'll invite her to my town, and she'll see all her friends there. So we did plan ahead for each person taking about two minutes individually to get into the town because that's just how it works. So we get each person in. And then when the seventh person in, mind you that Kinja was the eighth person. So when the seventh person got in, we actually all disconnected and had to do it all over again because it was like a communication error. It's so annoying because... <sighs> I, I understand that they probably have some type of tech limitation. But yeah. I also don't understand why they have a tech so. limitation. I don't think they do. I just don't think they know online. Like, there's no reason where there should be, like, a little airport lobby or just, like, getting into the town, like, in two seconds. Like, it shouldn't be a big thing. Like, I know you want to show the yeah. person, like, oh, flying over your town, they see how cool see, it is. but I feel like there has to be some type of tech limitation, though, because I've seen 
fan videos that explore the concept much better. And I don't know how much harder this would be to implement. And I can send you guys the video, but there was a, I think a four to six minute video. I think Mike saw it that fans made that went over quality of life features for the game that made the game so much better. Yeah, One of them was literally a airplane app on the Nook phone where you call uh, Wilbur or uh, Orville, whoever's on this on, at the deck at the desk, and you call him and say, "Hey, open my gates for me." Like, like, what? Is it that? Is it that hard to do? No, like, I, I like that. Be. But like, I just imagine all these other games, like on like really any system, where you could join someone's game in like two seconds. And, that's like, what that's I'm it. saying. So like, I, if it's a hardware limitation, Nintendo, then why are you having hardware limitations? Like, this is your most advanced console. And your multiplayer makes me not want to play it. I legitimately yeah. think I'd actually play it more and and even consider streaming it more. Because I like games like Splatoon. I think Splatoon is really fun. But mm -hmm. why am I going to waste 20 minutes of my time trying to, one, just get into the game? Because I have to get through the Splat Sister shit. And then, yeah. not only that, then I have to wait for Ryan to play a full match before I could join him. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's so frustrating and it, i want to play your games nintendo i really truly do but you make it so that i don't want to yeah like but, i don't know like maybe it could very much be like a loading thing on the other side and it really does take that long for them to load in i but feel again, like that's like, unacceptable in 2020 i, I gotta be honest with you You're but right. there really should just be like a queue or something where like people could group up together and load all at once like i don't know i mean even that would be better because at least then it's like okay you're you're in a party system and you know, then you can queue up and then we, I, I don't know. It's just, again, I find it very concerning that every other company seems to have found a way to make very simple matchmaking, except for Capcom. And, mm -hmm. you know, Capcom and Nintendo also have to be in this boat of, we can't create multiplayer gaming sessions very easily. I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe it is more difficult than we think, but I feel like a no, triple A company- it is, but- I don't know. A triple A company like Nintendo should not be having their multiplayer criticized for party issues out of yeah. all things. Um, but I don't want to go get too much on, on a rant, but I yeah, do yeah. agree that that also. Right <laughs> no, it's okay. But any, okay, so anything else, Mike, from you? Um, also, I just want to attack this one individual, Blathers, who I'm not a fan of anymore. <gasps> what do you because... mean? So, but, so I got all the fossils done. Like, I finished all the fossils. What? And Part spoiler... of me too. And spoilers, there's zero reward for it. There's no don't you, reward. Don't you get a museum if you complete everything in the museum? Like you get a little museum model? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I I mean, I only finished the fossil. I didn't finish like the bug painting and. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. It. I I believe in the previous games. If you donated everything to the museum, you got a little museum model that you could put in your house. But, I believe. But the fact is, when you finish the fish and the bugs, you for the fish you get the golden um fishing oh. rod. Oh, I see. Net. But the but with the fossils, you get nothing, and it takes a lot of time. So I feel like I'm you like, get the shovel. You should, but instead you gotta do Gulliver's thing for the shovel, which Ugh. he does, he's not showing up on my island, so I don't know what that's about. But I mean, anyway, like, screw Mike. I don't like him anymore. I, I'm like, how is the reward not being so you could like assess your own fossils? Like that should be the reward or something. Ooh, that'd be cool. Oh wait, that would actually be so cool that you learned so much from Blathers. You were able to assess yeah. your own fossils because you got every fossil exactly. Hi, Ross Nintendo. <laughs> wait, Mike. Wait, that's actually 500 IQ. I know. That's what I've been dwelling on this idea for so long. Like Mike's I'm sure other sitting... people have the idea, but still. <laughs> Mike's been sitting depressed in his room, thinking, "Why can't I just inspect my own fossils? I, I know them to. all already." And like, what especially hit me is with the stamp rally, which I hate. Blathers goes on like a whole five speech bubble thing about it every single day and i'm like i don't want to do this and today mike it ends today i can't do it anymore ryan <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah so I, I guess something that i'll say with animal crossing because again we do have a lot of great things about it um i do think that another downside to it is that the soundtrack actually might be one of the worst in the series and i didn't consider this until recently because i was like oh the game it sounds nice it's up to upbeat it's nice and bubbly but I saw a couple of videos or a couple of different threads online talking about this, that if you listen closely, a lot of songs sound very similar in terms of beat and instrumentation. And I'm sure, Nicole, with everything you've been doing with music, you could probably attest to this more than I can. But I was listening to the game over a few points in the day, and I'm saying, if you played me a song right now, I could not tell you what time of day it is. Meanwhile, if you pl play like New Leaf or the original and say, what time of day it is, I could probably tell you, oh, this is nighttime. This is... 5 p.m. This is 7 p.m. Like I probably could pick out key tracks, 
I could not tell you my favorite track in this game, honestly. I so I I don't know a lot of music theory, so I can't really dive into that side of things. I can just tell you from how I feel listening to the soundtrack, and it just feels too. It's gonna sound weird, but it just feels too modern for the game. Um, I think what worked in the previous soundtracks for Animal Crossing was the, oh, I've been muted this entire time. I'm so sorry. What? No, um, you're with you. No, we can hear you. I know you can, but the stream I was muted. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, sorry. It's I muted because I keep getting motorcycles driving by, and I don't want the podcast to pick it up. And then I forgot to unmute, so my bad. Uh. Um, but anyway, so I think the issue is that the soundtrack is actually just too modern. Um, it sounds. Um, it, it's weird because I I also had this issue with oh, Yoshi's Woolly World or whatever that game was. It was cute, and the soundtrack was cute. Don't get me wrong, but I just remember listening to it, and I'm like, it's just too modern. And I think part of the charm of the other Animal Crossing games was that it had a very unique soundtrack, but it was using older sound fonts. So mm-hmm. it it still had its like retro vibe, but it was a different take on retro. And I that's what I liked about the, the other ones. Now, if you're just going by the sounds, uh, like the songs themselves and just how they're like written, I mean, it does just kind of sound like every other song. Um, and it's good. It's high quality music. Don't get me wrong. It's not like the music is bad. It's not like they didn't care. I do think... Animal Crossing has a lot of like a lot of people are attracted to the game because of the music itself. Um, but yeah, I don't actually. Maybe I wasn't muted on stream. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. But point of the matter is that um, I think the theme, the Horizons theme, is actually really good. Other than mm-hmm. that, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Honestly, the main theme is the best song in the game. It is. It is the best song in the game. It, but it's just weird because it's like in the past, it's like, oh, I remember 1 a.m. and 5 p.m., 7 p.m., noon. Like, I remember all these things, and I've always really enjoyed them. And then this game, I'm just like, eh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, it, honestly, and, and I do want to hear Mike's thoughts, too. It really is a, a factor where you're right. New Leaf, like, I can tell you exactly, oh, that's 5 p.m., that's 7 p.m., that's 12, midnight. And, like, I just think that you, the, the modern thing is interesting. I haven't considered the modern element. I do think the songs, quality-wise, sound really, really good. But they're just too samey, and they all use the same modern tones. Mike, what do you think? Um, Yeah, it's I'm sort of indifferent on the music, personally. Like, I don't think it's going to beat the other Animal Crossing games. But, like, I, I bought my head to 9 a.m. So <laughs> I wake up at that time. And then it was fine by me. I don't know. Like, the KK Slider music's always good. If you want to go that route, but as far as just the daytime tunes or nighttime tunes, it's 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 very average. Uh, but so, you know what? I, I, I was thinking my foot in both ends here. I, like, I, I think with, your point. with KK though, like his soundtrack still sounds kind of retroy. Yeah, that's so true I, too. Like I, I agree. I think the KK music is great. Um, I also um, I want to sidetrack slightly, but this also applies to KK. I think things are way too easy to get in this game. Um, I think they. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but for some reason in this game, I feel like making money is a joke. I feel yeah, like, it is. Uh, like, okay, I know I grinded the game really hard in the first five days. I didn't time travel. I just, I literally did what I said I did, which was I went to my friend's towns, got all the fruit that I could. And for the first maybe week and a half, I just replanted all the fruit. And I got to a point where every t- every other day or every three days, whatever the spawn rate is, I would make 300K or 400K gold or, mm-hmm. um, bells just yeah. by just just from fruit so um i don't know like i i was able to upgrade my house i have one debt left if i played for a week and a half i'd have that debt paid off uh, which mm-hmm. means that had i had i not quit within a month and a half i would have had you'd the entire done. huh i said you'd be done i'd be done and i think that's weird to me because in previous animal crossing games maybe it was because it was so hard to connect and get things that you needed uh, until the DS version, at least. Even with the DS version, I feel like, yes, I made money through my my fruit ways, but mm-hmm. I never made enough to the point where I felt like I was able to beat the game quickly. I remember I played I played Wild World like crazy back in the day. I mean, every day for like a summer. Remember yeah. that, Ryan, when we went to camp oh, together. I yeah, and I remember I would I would grind and I had all the fruit, and I still don't feel like I made money as fast as as now. Maybe yeah, it's because it's, of the extra pocket space. I don't know. I mean, that's most likely. Like, there's a couple factors that lead into it. I know I feel like fishing and bugs aren't really worth it anymore, except for like a few times of yeah 
few seasons, but oh, or if you can get you know four coelacanths. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But you're right, def money is easier. But there are more things to spend on when you get like I agree. upgraded, which is nice. But like I did hit the point where I don't even do the turnip trades anymore because I'm like, I don't want to go through the trouble of selling my turnips. Yeah, but... and you know what? Turnip trades are interesting too, but this might be a small hot take, but I have no issue with people who time travel, but I do have an issue with the fact that it ruins the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Like... If you want to time travel and play with time travel, I welcome you to do that if that's the way that you want to play, but you cannot deny the fact that it can ruin the game for other people and it does kind of ruin the economy. Um, I know yeah. it's a single player game, I, I get that, but the whole point of Animal Crossing is to show off your town, is to show off your house. And it, it kind of sucks as somebody who doesn't time travel to go to a friend's house who does time travel and then you see you, you have store is ruined for you you have store upgrades ruined for you um you have you feel like you can't match up and then at some point it just kind of feels like like why like why am i not like what's the point in playing no, i should say yeah. like that because there is always a point in playing it like if you want to play it single player for yourself then great but i don't know i again i don't have a problem with people who time travel i have friends that time travel play the game however you want but i don't think it's fair to say that it doesn't ruin the game for other people Mm -hmm. That's a fair mm -hmm. take. I never really thought about it like that. I think I that's feel a hot like take. I think the I think the Animal Crossing community uh -oh. is way too toxic. Yes, Kendra, friends oh, are they time definitely travel. Are. They definitely <laughs> they definitely are too toxic. Like the overall community is really, really bad. Like I still can't get over the animal trading, but I think I covered that last week. Okay, the animal trading honestly should be illegal. I think that it is should be illegal. absolutely horrible. They should bring those police dogs back from the first and second game and just go after the animal slavers. Oh, okay, Kidja, here's the thing though. Again, I really don't care that anybody time travels. It's a single player game. But you know, if you're trying to push multiplayer, it just it, it feels a little it feels I should phrase it this way. It feels bad as a non time traveling person to go into somebody's town who time traveled and didn't didn't wait to get the upgrades and then you're like oh damn like i don't know it, it kind of ruins the surprise a little bit and it's also just a little bit like yeah uh, i mean i'm i'm on the fence like i definitely see where you're coming from i'm on the fence where if you play the game play how you want and have fun with it I like agree. As, as you said but it's it's sort of ruins it in the like uh i don't know where i'm going with this well and then like, the I, problem... I oh go ahead like, I do know where you're coming from, but the game, which is, I guess, another hot take that's sort of aggravating, is that the game limits you on its own. Like, before, it was like, oh, you spend a certain amount of bells at a store, and then it upgrades. And that's how it should be. But now it's like, oh, now you're forced to wait 30 days before it could upgrade. And now there's probably going to be other things in the shop, like other upgrades for the shop, but that's not going to come in, like, future updates, for example. And they'll probably add future shops in the update. Like, it's just sort of sucks that they're keeping out content just to extend the life of the game that's sort of where i'm at uh, and the other thing to it going back to the economy so now we're playing a game right that's global multiplayer it's not local multiplayer this is global anybody can connect with anybody that's how you get things like the animal trading circle which is fucking weird yeah. but okay <laughs> but, but okay if people want to play that way fine but now you're getting the problem of people time traveling so much and abusing turnips that mm -hmm. these things are going for insane amounts of gold yeah and so now you're ruining the market for the people who don't time travel mm -hmm. so again yes play the game you the way you want to play but now you're okay obviously i meant bells kidja not gold <laughs> okay you got so much wow on the mind oh damn but but the, I think that's my point. And then, so now the people who don't time travel are now excluded from animal trading when everybody should have a right to animal trade, okay? Oh, no, they shouldn't know it's an animal <laughs> trade. It's a terrible system. Um, uh, but, my okay. biggest thing with it is where... It, so, like, I agree with you where you can't really buy anything from other people online because the economy is completely ruined. But you could still sell things. So I had, like... I forgot if I told you the story, but I had like two DIYs that I liked that I didn't want to just like give away. Mm -hmm. And like all my friends like sort of had them. And if someone here had them or doesn't have them, I'm sorry that I sold them in advance. That's oh, why I'm not going to save the item. But I'm like, I don't want to sell it. Or I don't want to just give it to Nook. So let me like look online real fast and sell it. And do you want to know how much I got two DIYs for? 
I'm kind of curious to know what they were, but yeah, well, how much? Uh, let me guess. I'm gonna sell, say that in total, you sold them both for a million. Damn. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I sold them both for three fifty. Three fifty k. That's still crazy, though. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, just two ones that I was gonna get rid of. Just, just like that. I'm like, okay, why not? And they weren't like super, super rare ones. They were just like, oh, this seems pretty good. I, but... I like the DIYs. I have to actually say, I think that that was a great addition to this game. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Are you able to customize the colors on them? On some, yeah. yes. DIYs, you can. Not okay. all of them, but a lot of them have customized colors. I it's think... just the items you buy from Nook. Those are set in color, depending on when you catalog them. I think that the DIYs, at the Nook Miles, and um, the Gathering were actually the best additions to this version of Animal Crossing. Yeah, I agree. DIYs are good, but not getting certain ones are a pain in the ass. Yeah, but again, I, I think it's great that they're, the global multiplayer is so accessible now, um, especially with things like Discord, where, again, going back to the animal trading, you could have a Discord where people <laughs> can, like, connect easily with each other and, and get things like that. I think that that's great, but again, then going back to our multiplayer complaints, it's so annoying to do multiplayer in this game. It, like, I have no interest in, in getting involved with those circles because it it's so awful. I gave Peanut like 20 DIYs the other day. It, it, I like it. It's fun. I think there's so Can many of them to the too. People. What do you say? Kenji gives to the people. She gives back to the fans, her only fans. <laughs> um, she... But no, I, I think that those are great additions to the game. I think it, gives, it also gives longevity. People like to collect. I think games like this are great when you have a lot of things to collect, especially since they got rid of the gyroids. I think that's the thing I miss the most out of features <laughs> that they removed. They might come back. I hope they do. I really hope they do because I think that they did serve a purpose, albeit they were some of them were just annoying. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're going to come in a future update. Gyroids, the cafe. I mean, obviously, you know, when cafe people better come back. When, better. When, when people when people data mine, it either could be things that were originally planned but were not implemented, or they're going to come eventually. I do think that because of popularity. I do think because right now we're we're finishing the spring update because the spring update had leaf the uh the red art stuff um the stamp rally and then June's gonna be wedding season I think once June ends and we head into mid late summer and the fall you're gonna see gyroids the cafe I think those popular features will come back I'd like that and let's let's actually talk about some of the DLC um what do you guys think about the recent DLC that entered the game I hate this stamp rally <laughs> what is the stamp rally because I haven't played so. So basically, you go in. Blathers gives a whole speech about it every single time, Aww. and then it's cool at first because it's like, oh yeah, go like find these stamp stations. So there's three stamp st- stations at each section of like the museum: the fossil, bug, and fish. So it's like, oh yeah, you get a reason to explore your museum. The museum's super, super nice. So it's so worth going for. So you go through it, and you do it once, you do it twice, you do it three times, like for each one, and it's like, okay, you get like a little pr- um, prize for each one, which I think it's some kind of wall mount of i don't know i even look at it but it's like okay cool you get a little prize for doing it he's like oh come back tomorrow and you get to do it again oh thank you kenji it's a plaque you get a plaque for each section okay i was like okay cool and he's like come back tomorrow and i'm like okay i'm sure will buddy so (laughs) i i go back tomorrow and he gives me the same exact speech and he's like go find it and the stamps are in different sections so it's like okay there's still three in the bugs but they're in different places inside the bug section so you go exploring all over again which is again fun because i like running through the museum so you get the bugs you get the fish you get the fossils you go back you're like hey blathers it's me again i finished all my stamps and he's like oh here's the same exact prize as yesterday i'm like okay that's that's nice of you i guess he's like come back tomorrow for more prizes i'm like okay i feel like it's gonna be the same prizes again but i'll be back (laughs) so you do it a third time and it's the same prizes i'm like okay that's that's fine and he's like and but then every single day for like 15 days ryan how long is this going on for now i mean felony brings up a point that he does tell you it's the same prizes. no he does he absolutely does and that's a very fair argument but i'm like i wish there was a way to be like why are you telling me this if I already have the prize? Like, I already know what's going on. You don't have to give the same exact speech every single time when I just want to assess a No, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, and you're, it, you're right. It was for 15 days. I, I think on these spring updates, it's been 
50 50 for me like i think that the stamp rally was if it was like a one day event or like a three day event i think that's completely fine and you also you're right felony you can sell them um are they worth selling now like how much do you get for i'm them? not sure how much they go for but i guess you could sell them either way today is the last day so i'm not going to get any more <laughs> um, <laughs> i think the stamp rally was it could have been shorter but i think it was a cool concept to explore your museum i think that the next month is wedding season i'm not going to take advantage of it honestly unless there's really cool wedding furniture um but on the other hand, I think the other updates were amazing. Bringing red back, so having the art yeah, museum have art was great. I think bringing leaves so you could have shrubs and bushes in your, in your town is really great. So I think the updates have been, you know, a mixed bag. So I'm sure when we get to the updates for July and August and in the fall, whether we see, again, the gyroids, the cafe, new fruit and veggies, um, I think you can have good updates on both sides. Mm-hmm. Kendra, I'm not trying to get banned again for trying to throw a wedding. Or wait, no, I didn't get banned for the. Oh no, I didn't get banned for the wedding. I got banned for something else that I can't share. Oh, and but... speaking of um, <laughs> fel felonies, um, comments about red showing up twice. Because I've I've actually only seen red like three times myself, or three or four times. Yeah, he not much. Yeah, um, do you guys know before we get to the hot takes? Do you guys know what the formula is for the visitors? Because there's actually a, a proven formula in the game. Really? Yeah, I saw yeah. it before, but you say it again, Ryan. Yeah, so actually it makes it easier because at least you know what you're getting, but it still can be frustrating when you don't see red. So the weekends are locked in place. The weekend you get KK on Saturday, like you've always had, and Sunday you get um, Daisy May for the turnips every single time. Um, and then at, at night, randomly, you can get Celeste or, um, or uh, Wisp. Those are random at nights. In terms of the weekdays, you are guaranteed every weekday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you are always guaranteed to have Sahara, Leaf, and uh, Kicks in a week. You are always guaranteed those three. The other two weekdays, it's random between the other five. So Gulliver, Red, Flick, CJ, and L L L Labelle, Label. Um, those two are randomized for the other two weekdays. You don't have the other three. And then if you don't get the two you want, they get increased priority in the role next week. That's how it works. Gotcha. That's interesting. Which, which which still means that red is still type kind of hard to get, but he, he'll come up at some point. Eventually. So, what's slightly? Are you guys done with that topic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. I I I want to talk a little bit about one more thing is um tools. They added tools to Animal Crossing. Um. Well. Let me let me rephrase that. Tools have always been in the game, but they added breakable tools um, because well, you mean, can upgrade tools in this game. Yeah, a little bit differently than in the past. Because in the past, it was you had the regular ones. Uh, yes, that could break. Yes. Uh, okay. Let me let me start over. So they added mm -hmm. like different tiers of breakable tools to the game, and getting the golden tools are kind of still a pain in the ass. But um, yeah, so you're constantly crafting new tools instead of just buying them and i mean you could buy them if you wanted but at first when you don't have a lot of money and you have to deal with the durability and shit um it sucks and i have to say like i'm very annoyed because i don't have any golden weapons i don't know about you guys but i just like to fish in this game i find it relaxing i find it fun mm -hmm. maybe that's a hot take i don't know but no, it really good. annoys me that you guys are really critical today um <laughs> You got it really annoys me that I have to carry around like six fishing rods. Yeah. Um now I just got the golden watering can, which you get for getting five stars in your town. I think Mike's right where the other tools come with the museum and Gulliver. I think you're right though. I think the tools, because we're we're doing a lot more, they break more often, which is frustrating. I wish to combat this if they want to keep durability, they do either like a durability bar so you can see how much you have yeah. left, or or if, if that's too much to implement graphically like a bar, just do it like Breath of the Wild where, hey, your tool's about to break just so I know so I can go replace it. I just also don't like... Like, I know why they did it, right? Because you're supposed to be farming up all these materials for the DIY, but I, it annoys me with, with the tools. I, I don't know. It doesn't annoy me. Farming up the materials to make the DIY stuff doesn't bother me. I just really get bothered by the tools because I already have to use my... Um, I already have to use up my bag space on keeping a multiple uh, multiple tools in my bag. 
Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. It, it annoys me. And then it's like, oh, okay, I have three fishing rods, and then that means I'm missing out on two spots on fish, which honestly I know sounds kind of dumb, but as somebody who likes to min-max and like do stuff like that, I don't know, it annoys me. And then also I like to keep my other tools in there, so I have to keep my um, slingshot in there. Right. Yeah, so you have like 15 spaces so, that are just like tools and stuff. Yeah, it does add up after a while, and I don't know, it, it does annoy me. I also wish that golden tools weren't so annoying to get, but I, I understand why they they changed it. Like in the past with the shovel, you just bury another shovel and you get a golden shovel. Yeah. I, I get that that was probably a little too easy, but meh, I don't know. That That's <laughs> it on that. We do have to keep moving though, so um, let's jump into some of our random hot takes in here. So non-Animal <laughs> Crossing related. This is where the fun we're running, starts. We're running out of time. Don't get too stuck up on it. Yeah. Um, so, Ryan, you go first. <laughs> yes, get those um, those cold drinks, those ice packs ready. We have some hot <laughs> takes. Uh, if you can't take the hot takes, get out of the kitchen. Um, so my hot take is that Skyward Sword is a underrated Zelda game and gets a lot of unfair flack. So let's start with the negatives that I will agree with. I think motion controls even if they're implemented well, I think can still be really annoying. I know they're the future innovative virtual gaming. I just don't love motion controls, but that's a common problem. I'm not going to defend Skyward Sword in that. Motion controls are kind of annoying. The sky was meant to be like Wind Waker with exploring the islands in the sky. It was far more empty, so that was a problem they had to fix. And then finally, um, Fi was an annoying companion. Those Those are the common three complaints, so I will give the game those flax i can't defend those because those are oh, not minish cap yes mike not minish cap um so those are three complaints and i think because of those three complaints motion controls phi and exploring the sky the game constantly gets rated like bottom tier zelda or like mid tier i'm not gonna say sit here and say it's the best i'm not gonna sit here and say it's top three or top five but i think it's a lot better than people give it credit for and this is why I think it has an amazing story. It basically, in terms of the timeline, is the origin story for Zelda. So it sets up the whole timeline in terms of creating the Master Sword, why we have so many iter so many iterations of Ganon and Zelda and Link because they are descendants of these people and it's like a different generations of those heroes and villains. It has great settings in terms of exploring the three regions and I think, honestly, has some of the best dungeons in the series with, you know... Ancient Cistern, Lay New Mining Facility, Earth Temple. It has some of the best weapons in the game. Like we the beetle was a great innovation. The whip was great. The bow and arrow, the um uh what was the one in the mining facility? The the gust bellows is pretty cool. Then you have the, you know, the one-on-ones with Girahim, which are really intense epic fights. So while the game does have some flaws to it that if they ever make a port or an HD remake, I think they could fix a lot of problems with Skyward Sword it has a lot of great things too that should not be undervalued. I think that's fair. I, I want to withhold my opinion on it just because of one, I never <laughs> beat it. I've only beat one Zelda game, but I will say this about Skyward Sword is I do think it did get a lot of unnecessary hate, especially looking back at it. I think at the time people were so upset by the motion controls, they did let it get the best of them in their opinions. I think the game was beautiful. And what I did play of it story-wise, it seemed good. I wouldn't say it was one of the better stories, um, in my opinion, but I also didn't beat it. So mm -hmm. I did get about halfway through it. I think I did like four dungeons, right? And there's like usually seven dungeons, eight dungeons. Uh, in Skyward Sword, there are six main dungeons because you go to um, each of the three regions a couple of times. There's th six main dungeons. And then there's like a seventh final dungeon. My biggest issue with it is the same issue that I have with Twilight Princess. I hate those parts where you have to go back and collect the little like essences or whatever. Yeah, that, that's not great. I, I I hate, hate, hate games that do shit like that. Mm -hmm. Phantom Hourglass did the same thing. Please stop. Oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Uh -huh. Phantom Hourglass. OK, you want a hot take? That game wasn't that bad. That game uh -oh. was not that bad. Not the I hot like take. That I, it's my least favorite game in the series. That, that's, I like that game. Wait, you what, do Mike? or you don't, Mike? I do like it. I like that. I oh. liked it, too. I hate, oh. I, the only one I truly hated was Spirit, was Spirit Tracks. All right. Both the DS ones are not good. Ryan, now that's a hot take. No, but... <laughs> and Mike, you have anything to say about Skyward Sword before we wrap it up? Um, I absolutely hated the boss rush mode in Skyward Sword. I agree with Ryan on almost all points. I hated the boss rush mode because I just remember fighting that stupid two-footed beast monster climbing up that spiral cliffside. 
three whole times you have to do it before you can get the shield. And if you failed, if you lost once, you had to redo the whole thing. Ugh. It was not fun. It was such a grind, too. I think you guys should just go play Twilight Princess again. I will. Don't, you don't have to force my hand. It's, it's, it's just the greatest. All right, so next hot take. Mike? Okay, turn. so classic RPGs are better than new ones overall. So I mean, you don't want to get too, like, snooty here because I like uh -huh. all RPGs. Like, I love, I love modern ones, and I like classic ones, obviously, from this hot take. But I think overall, classic RPGs, or even, like, if you want to go, like, classic-inspired, like, Bravely Default, because that's my plugin for Bravely Default, <laughs> is, is just overall. Like, I feel like, so people always have, like, an issue with, like, slow pacing and, like, slow starting RPGs, which I guess this is more of a hot take than the overall point I'm trying to make. I love when RPGs start out slow. I love, like, get, getting into the environment, even though it's, like, cheesy and, like, whatever. I like, oh, here's like my parents, here's like my best friend, and then like wait like four hours for like something interesting to happen. I'm like perfectly okay with that. I like starting out slow because I feel like it just sets the pacing good and sets like the world building good as long as you're willing to put the time in to get invested, you know? Yeah. And, so, uh, yeah. And just to piggyback off of that too, like we talked about this at the beginning of the podcast, but you know, playing Chrono Trigger just kind of made me realize that you don't need a super complicated story to be good. You don't need something that uh, complicated stories have their place. Don't get me wrong, but not every RPG has to have some complicated 120 hour story. You can do very well with very simple, simple storytelling build up as time goes on and, and still have something that, that is emotional. Like those cutscenes are very well done in Chrono Trigger. And I'm not talking about just the anime ones, even the pixel ones. When you go back and learn about frogs past, Mm -hmm. um that was touching and it was very very simple yeah you know it was two megabytes of information and it still <laughs> did very very well because so. i feel like they're so limited by their technology they just have to use what they could work with and like they just make like the best of it as much as they can there's a but... proper way for this saying I, I don't remember how it goes but it's something to the extent of like limitations create the best art and it's true yeah right like about... yeah, yeah yeah and ryan like do you have anything to say about this about uh, classic RPGs are better. Yeah. I think it's a very fair point that, you know, like I brought up with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, when sometimes developers try to shoot the moon, it, sometimes it works, like with the original Xenoblade, where a big story can pay off. Sometimes other, other times a big story doesn't pay off. So I completely get Mike's point where there is something to be said about starting slow, having a more simple story, and it'll have a more satisfying payoff than trying to go for broke and it just doesn't work out. Um, I think obviously Chrono Trigger is a great example of this. I would want to hear quickly Mike's opinion on um, speaking of a really good example of a classic RPG and a modern RPG, mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII remake. Because you know when I, I would, they want to bring that up actually because because yeah. when I you know when I see a play that looks beautiful, I think the uh, the live action is great, and I think that a lot of people do like it because it's one of the best games of all time. I also see a lot of flack that people don't like it or people don't respect it with what it brought to the table. So, Mike, what would you say with that classic RPG versus its modern remake? So, I'm just going to say I never really played that much of Final Fantasy VII, the original. <clears throat> but just going off of the remake itself, like, I know I just made this whole thing where I like where things start off slow, but Final Fantasy VII remake, and even just Final Fantasy VII, the original one, just throws you into the action. And I love that, too. I thought it was so good. But, and like, that's a really good way to get invested in the world too. Cause you're like, you're fighting, you're trying to figure out what's going on. You're learning these characters while all this action scenes are happening. And the remake does it really, really well. Then after the first like big action, like moment, like the first hour or two, then things start to slow down. And then you sort of get that like, okay, let me take in the world now and see what's going on. So when it's done like that, that works really, really well too. I just feel like you don't see it too, too much in modern RPGs. Well, you don't see it done well in modern yeah, RPGs. Yeah, Because I feel like people it. try to do it. Um, like at, a, a good example of like a good balance of that is Xenoblade 2. Or mm -hmm. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 as well, I should. So that's why. Yeah. 2 wasn't yeah. bad. But I mean, at least with the first one, it had a really good balance of world. Like introducing the world, introducing the Monado. And then just throwing you into some action where... You know the whole thing of Fiora and stuff. So like that's also really good. Um, but again, I I would put that in the minority of games that actually did it well. And I haven't seen Final Fantasy. Like the only Final Fantasy I played was the one with Lightning, which is thirteen, I think. Right. I like that one. I always yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and I liked it too. But that also was like very. That was classic 
nobody actually knows what's going on the first yeah. opening scene is you just fighting things and you're like what's going on uh. and it just gets like more confusing as it goes it on gets if i remember so correctly confusing. It, it, but it's not bad i enjoyed the story no see not... like my argument here isn't like oh modern rpgs are bad when they do it or they're just bad overall no i love those games i cannot stress that enough i think they're really really good it's just for me personally what i prefer and what i like more is the yeah. hot take yeah that's fair i think yeah um but okay, so I guess um, we'll move on to the last hot take, which this one's spicy in the WoW community, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it because, um, oh wait, yeah, Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts really Thank quick. you, Kinja. Oh, that, that's a great point. <laughs> oh, boy. You want to talk about that? I don't know how I didn't hit that. No, Kinja said it all in two words. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so in the WoW community, this one's a little spicy, and I know you guys don't really play WoW, so I don't want to go yeah, too much I'll, into I'll, it. I'll Some people in the chat do, so I'm ready to hear this. Yeah, so... Um, I think Mr. Pandaria is the second best expansion behind uh, Wrathless King. Uh, <gasps> and I will back oh it up. I will God. back it up. I Are think... You serious? I know. <laughs> Alright, first of all, I'm going to exclude Classic, because that's one, not an expansion, and two, I never played it, so I don't want to bring Classic into this argument. Um, I, I played a little bit of Classic when it came out again in 2019. Um, <laughs> whatever, Kenja. Um... <laughs> But okay, here, here's the thing. I think Miss of Pandaria struck the perfect line, it, 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 the, or the struck the perfect tune for every single aspect of that game except for daily quests. I think the raids overall were very, very good. Tier one, not eh. Tier two and tier three, very good. I think mm -hmm. the. Honestly, yeah, Legion, oh, was, indeed. Oh, boy. Legion yeah, was, was good. Was Legion was good, but the legendary system was absolutely horrible. Titan forging was bad. In MOP, the Titan forging and war forging were at least somewhat controlled. Because I don't think Titan forging was actually in MOP. I think it was only war forging. Um, the the daily quests in MOP were bad, but I also do think honestly it was overblown by the community. Um, yeah, but the last tier of e e almost every expansion lasted way too long. I mean, you could say the same shit about ICC. And I also think that that was the best expansion in the game. I, I mean, I... N I no, in Miss of Pandaria, I barely raided. I, I did each tier, but they were casual. I did not raid very hardcore in any of them. Um, I also played both Alliance and Horde in Miss Pandaria. And honestly, most of Miss of Pandaria, I actually PvP'd. I PvP'd more in Mr. Pandaria than I did any other expansion. I just, it, it's hard for me because I feel like the systems in that game were very good. I think the people's complaints in current day World of Warcraft would be solved if you went back to a Mr. Pandaria style, which is buying p your own PvP gear, weekly upgrades where you can play any day of the week, get your points, and it resets every week. The catch-up systems were great. Classes felt amazing. Very few classes had major problems. You're always going to have classes with problems. Um... I, Why'd they get rid of all that that weekly stuff? So after the, so then they wanted to turn it into more of a... Well, this is where it gets weird, because the expansion that came after Mr. Pandaria had almost no content in it. That was the first... It's oh, called it? Warlords of Draenor, and it's the one that everybody hated. They're like, this is the worst expansion. Because what they did was they gut 80% of every class. So classes got really boring to play. Um, they just didn't have enough content. They must have had some type of issue internally where they scrapped an entire raid tier and then they tried to rush to get the next expansion out. What they actually, Sam is right, what they actually did in Warlords Draenor, the content that was there was actually really good. The problem was there just was not enough to keep people playing. So people quit because it's like there's literally nothing to do outside of raiding. Nothing. There is actually nothing to do. Um, but I again, think about that. I think if you look at current day WoW, what are the people's problems with it? Titan forging? Well, Titan forging wasn't a thing in Mr. Pandaria. It was war forging, and I don't think war forging was that problematic. Um, bring back your weekly cap so that you could buy points, and and it had RNG protection. So like, if you didn't get the gear that you needed from a raid boss, if you at least did your weekly events after mm -hmm. three weeks, you know for a fact you could buy the piece that you want. But that's three weeks of grinding to get the one piece. So, realistically, if you wanted to do it that way and you played the game that way, you'll never get all of your best gear anyway. So, so no. that's why I think, and I honestly just think that people tunnel way too hard on the pandas, saying, why are pandas in... Kung Fu Pandas, boo! 
Ooh. Yeah, I think that, and honestly, I think, yes, the daily systems at the beginning of the expansion were a problem, but they fixed it. They fixed it after a patch. To Isle of Thunder and Timeless Isle were probably two of the greatest things that they've added into this game as far as endgame content goes. Um, and yes, while I do agree that Legion had a lot of amazing shit, I think the legendary system fucked over way too many people, and that was an entire expansion that was not just one patch, which was the daily systems. That is why I think Miss Pandaria is the second best expansion behind Wrath of the Lich King. Um, I agree, based off that argument and not hearing any other argument. I'm just I... glad that we got some we got some good interaction. This this really was a take that had to be discussed. <laughs> it was, and I and again, this is a hot take because most people are going to come and say burning crusade i only played a little bit of burning crusade and i didn't play it at the end so maybe i am slightly biased but from the research i have done on the expansion i do think that it was game break like game changing i think it propelled if they fix the legendaries i would actually agree with you that legion was probably the number one expansion honest to god i would actually agree with you on that but i think the Le i think the legendaries fucked over way too many people for way too long myself it, it yeah, I would say it was better than Wrath. Um, but yeah, I, I just I I think it holds more weight than the issues that Miss Pandaria had personally. Again, that's just personally. Um, well, that's what hot takes are all about. But I, you see people that put Miss Pandaria as like the third worst expansion. You're really gonna put that shit at that far at the bottom, or like the second worst expansion? People are putting Warlords of Draenor above Miss Pandaria. I saw on somebody's tier list. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There was nothing to do in that game! Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, so man, they, they probably had Battle for Azeroth at the, at the top. Oh okay, God. last hot take, and then we're gonna wrap this up. BFA okay. is actually not that bad. Uh oh. I, there are some <laughs> issues with BFA that may. Okay, so BFA is the worst expansion. BFA is hands down the worst expansion. Let's, let's get that <laughs> out of the way. Okay. Okay, but I don't think it is that far behind warlords of draenor i think people are saying that bfa is the worst thing that could have ever happened but there is actually so much shit to do in this game the problem is that the rng fucking ruins it oh no the rng has ruined this game but i i actually do enjoy most of the systems in this game yeah so, i think that um I think that people go a little too hard on this game and then forget some of the other expansions. But anyway. <laughs> so that's reading the comments. Okay. Okay, Sam. All right. I think it's time to wrap this up before I get roasted again. <laughs> yeah. Um... Um, so, yeah. So, to wrap this up, um, thank you guys for watching. This will be on iTunes, Google Play, or whatever the Google thing is. I, I have to... I have to, cool. that's going to take me longer to do today because I forgot to hit the record button um, but that's okay I'll get that done and you can always find us every Sunday at 10am Eastern on for right now this channel and um, yeah you can follow us on Twitter at GetBlueShelled at BTCYD at 4Lenza and mm -hmm. at WinthyWhip do you guys have any closing statements? Uh, thank you for watching it was fun interacting with everyone Yes, and thank you guys. Hot take, that Nicole's hot take was probably the only real hot take. <laughs> actually, no, no, Ryan was I a good one. Ryan was a good say, hot take. No, I honestly have to say, though, that, I mean, obviously we did this podcast like back a few years ago, and then we just brought it back. I think my favorite part of returning has been li doing it live and having fan interaction because it gives us other things to talk about and makes it more natural of a discussion. So that's been my favorite part. Yes, I do agree with you. It's been, it's been you fun. Thank tuning in. Essentially, yes. keep coming back. We miss you. Come back. <laughs> Get your. And also, uh... one, one more thing is that since we are back and we do um, discuss internally, you know, what topics to do in future weeks, and we have a couple of ideas planned. If anyone has any other things you want to see us talk about, please let us know. Yeah, I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment. Um, or, I mean, if you're in the Twitch chat, like if you have a question mid podcast, just ask it, and we'll 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 bring it up and we'll talk about it. Um, yep. Or if you're listening on like iTunes or whatever, just email us at kabushalatgmail.com. We do pay attention to it. We do. Emails. We're lonely. We don't get emails. So. You really don't, though. Okay, uh, we're not answering that last question. That is our cue to leave. Um, <laughs> you're only going to see it if you're on Twitch, so you should catch us live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern 
to see Kinja's snarky remarks. What is she referring to? I don't know what the- I, I think- She's not speaking English. I don't know what's going on right now. I, can't, I don't understand what she said. Um, but yeah, so thanks everybody for tuning in, and I will catch you guys next week at the same time on this Twitch channel. See you later. Bye.